Welcome to DonAlfin.com. Today we're at Big Sand Wash Reservoir fishing for large and smallmouth bass and ran into some trout. So this uh, decided to do a video and a voiceover because we only had yeah, um, uh, audio on one camera. So bear with us and, uh, and uh, this is kind of going to be a fun little thing. Um, I'm with Mike Tavell, a good friend of mine. He's in the red in the back of the boat. And um, he fishes uh, grubs, he loves Ned rigs, he loves smaller baits, uh, light line. And uh, as we started to learn this reservoir for the first time, never, neither one of us had been on this reservoir, uh, the first fish he, catch, he catches is a beautiful 21-inch uh, rainbow trout. And um, so this is just uh, showing us uh, getting that fish into the net. This particular fish was completely filled with rock roller style uh, crustaceans. It was just incredible. We kept this fish because I owed a neighbor a fish or two, so we did keep a couple of fish. And um, when I cleaned it, literally you could take your fist and ball your fist up. And um, and they had it had that many crustaceans uh, in its uh, in its stomach. So the uh, fish are feeding and feeding uh, well, and uh, we had a great time. Now, um, after we get, uh, we finish uh, handling this fish, um, the scene's going to change, and obviously the sun's not going to be on our face, but it's going to be much later in the day because, as I told you, we we were fishing for large and smallmouth bass, and there's another video about the bass that we caught, but. Uh, uh, this was really kind of special because uh, these trout really, really, really wanted soft plastics. And, um, and so we uh, kind of honed in as we now we're looking at, the, uh, at another area. We found a point uh, that came out really shallow uh, close to the dam. And that's uh, the fish that you can see right there is uh, the first fish we caught. And that fish probably had to run 15 yards to grab my Ned Rig. And uh, we'll be talking about what a Ned Rig is, if you don't know, uh, as we go along. But this was the first fish we caught in the area. And you can see on the left part of the screen that uh, that point comes off fairly shallow and there were some flat rocks. And boy, these fish were chasing each other's tails. And, uh, you know, most of these that we caught were males, a few females, but most of them were males. And they were getting ready to spawn. And and uh how exciting uh was it uh to uh to catch these fish in two feet of water after we've already caught 25 bass and really had a wonderful day but this is uh early uh, in the afternoon maybe 1:30, uh, 2 o'clock but uh, all we did is went from one side of this point to the other there were always somewhere between 15 and 30 fish uh visible to us um, coming and going, coming in and out, going shallow, going back deeper. Uh, very, very clear water. Uh, but all we did is just uh, continually went back and forth uh, on this point. And, uh, and every once in a while, I should say every you know, few minutes, we'd get another fish uh, that would come in and just attack the lure. It was really kind of interesting. If the fish were chasing their, t their tails, uh, we didn't get uh, them to uh, stop doing what they were doing. But um, but when uh, you'd see a fish off by itself, you could just flip your net rig to it, and there and and there it is. Now this particular fish that we got, I just caught the the fish previous, uh, and had missed one, and uh, Mike threw back to the exact same spot that I was in, and and immediately got a, got got a bite. Now we were using exactly the same rig at this point. Um, a California Craw net rig, and uh, a net rig is is a is a fairly new invention made by a guy named uh, Ned back in Missouri, uh, the Missouri area anyway, and uh, and he wanted to develop a bait that that he could catch a bunch of fish. He wasn't he was not trying to win tournaments. He just wanted to get a bait that would get bites, regardless. And and so he made a little mushroom head, very very lightweight, and and on that head and hook obviously um, you put a soft plastic that's about three inches long that looks like a um, Yamamoto Senko but it's just three inches long and it floats 
So the mushroom head takes the, the soft plastic down to the bottom and then it stands on its end because the pl soft plastic floats. I don't know what it is, but for some reason the fish just can't resist that. And so this is maybe the third or fourth time I've used it on trout. But um, this happened to be just exactly what the doctor ordered. And uh, the, uh, I, you just see I missed one. I, it was constant that these fish had come and grab the back of the of the uh, three inch uh, Ned rig and sometimes didn't get the hook. So we probably uh, landed maybe 60, 70 percent of the fish that that uh, that bit. And of course, we were releasing uh, almost every one of the fish we caught. So they would just go right back to their spawn. And that was a that was a really good thing. So, uh, you know, Mike uses light line and you see him in the foreground uh, retying. He broke off a lot. But he also got more bites than I did. So you have to realize I'm using 10 pound test, he's using 6 pound test. And just that difference, I think, uh, enabled him using the same baits that I was using, the same color as in this specific area. See, I lost another one right there. That, um, uh, but he would, uh, uh, he would hook up more, but he also lost more because he did get snags and couldn't get them off. So, um, if you can't get a bite in an, in, in an area where you're watching the fish and you're in clear water, try to downsize everything. Downsize your bait, down, downsize your uh, line size, do everything you can to have your presentation look as invisible as possible. And I know people use fluorocarbon line to say that it's not visible to the fish, but that's not really accurate. Um, fluorocarbon can be seen, it can be sensed by the fish just like anything else, even though maybe visually they can't um, uh, see it at certain times depending on the color of the line. Um, they certainly can sense it with their lateral line, and it's, it's, especially in the in the case of bass. So lighter line works works best, but you also run the risk of breaking off. So as you're as you're looking at this, we're all doing we're both doing the same thing now. In this particular frame, if you look to the right of the of the frame, you'll see that uh, there's some light water there. It's actually brown water, and that and that's actually just a flat rock that comes out off that point. All the fish that we caught were in and around those flat rocks all the way along from the left to the right of the point. And uh, it was really exciting to see the fish just chase over and grab your, your lure. And so every once in a while, we'd get surprised. And, and uh, I believe coming up, well, there's Mike. You can't keep a good man down. There's Mike getting a fish uh, probably in a foot and a half of water, if that. And um, and he saw a little bit of a what he thought was a just a gray um, kind of like a fanning area there, and he just didn't see the fish, but threw the bait right up into that area, and all of a sudden this fish just came out and just nice hammered baby. his yep. his lure. Now this is these are all uh, twenty inch fish. These these are really really nice rainbows, deep uh, yellow color. Some of that's that nature of the, the spawn, map. but. Uh, others is is just that it's a they're they're very healthy. They probably eat a have a pretty doggone good wholesome diet. Um, so, once again, not to be a broken record, but we just kept moving back and forth, probably within about 150 to 200 yards around this point. And there's another fish that um, that came. Um, and, and they were very, very consistent. We didn't get all the fish on camera, um, but there's a nice, another nice 20 inch uh, uh, rainbow. And uh, we only caught one female. Most of the, most of the, the uh, fish we caught were males and they were ready to, to pop. And, they, and so uh, we tried to get them back in the water as quickly as we, as, as, uh, we could. And, and they just headed right back to the same areas that they were. So they're all honed in. Um, I know that, um, that rainbow, uh, rainbows that are that are uh, raised in hatcheries or even natural reproduction, they always like to go back and spawn in the areas that they were either stocked or where they where they uh, were hatched. And um, so it's amazing that they come to these areas, these points, and and that right close to the launch ramp, right close to the dam, because I'm sure that's 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 where they were they were. Um, uh, possibly um, stock now uh, the fish and game is doing a fairly good job especially with the kokanee salmon by putting them in um, 
uh, other, uh, you know, taking them in, in boats or putting them in rivers or, or, or taking them out to various areas where there are inlets that they can uh, find a place, a nice place to spawn. Now we changed uh, locations here and found a very, very similar situation just across the lake from where we were by the dam. And, uh, and once again, Trusty Mike immediately got into the action and, and uh, started catching some more fish. We, uh, we uh, 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 spent about an hour over by the dam and then we spent uh, an hour, actually probably only about 30, 40 minutes um, in the area that we're fishing now. Um, I actually caught a very, very large fish or hooked a large fish here that uh, could possibly have been the only largemouth we caught or had on, uh, but it came off. It did not, I didn't either, I messed up the hook set or whatever, but I, ha I had it on for, um, you know, probably a couple of three seconds. There he is right there, I think. And, um, and then all of a sudden he just came off. And it was the, one of the only times that that really happened when we had him on. Normally, when the, they hit the Ned Rig, boy, they're solid and they're on and, and there's no question. Um, if you watch here, Mike is doing the same thing that we did over by the dam and just little, just little pitches to flat rocks that are underneath. Notice in the right-hand side of the, the frame, you'll see the chunk rock that's there and, and um, those fish were just moving all the way around that and, uh, and we just absolutely had a ball catching these trout. And remember, we'd already been catching uh, the, uh, uh, you know, the smallies. Uh, we didn't catch any largemouth, but but a lot of smallies that day. So we had a, we had had a fun time. He's around the motor. Hey, thanks for uh, for watching. I hope you like our video. Um, subscribe to our channel. Okay, um, uh, We are going to be doing many many more videos. I. Um, I'm excited to uh, to teach as many people as I can about uh, fishing, and, uh, and uh, I urge you to go to www.donalfin.com. Well, this is Don at donalfin.com. Just uh, and, uh, once again, just showing you one of the one of the beautiful, uh, beautiful trout we've been see catching of our uh, today at Sand uh, Big Sand Wash uh, Reservoir. We did not think we were going to be doing a trout video, but but we had a wonderful time today catching trout and we were catching them basically on the same things we use for bass. I'm gonna let this baby go. This is a beautiful, beautiful male uh, rainbow. We, we've caught uh, a lot of them. You'll see them in the video, of course. But um, that fish came on a, a Ned rig. And let me get this in done and I'll finish talking to you. So that's the Ned rig, and that essentially was what we what used what we used today. We found the fish were very active. Uh, trout were, uh, you know, some trout were either getting ready to spawn or they were in eating the uh, spawn of the uh, perch that have just spawned. We saw ribbons and ribbons and ribbons of perch that uh, perch eggs, and and these these uh, uh, trout were coming in and take advantage of of taking advantage of those and eating those uh, those eggs and. Um, but, but literally, this is what we, we caught them on. So this video uh, today is going to be about rainbow trout at uh, Big Sand Wash. Had a wonderful time. Uh, we probably caught uh, upwards of 20 uh, trout in just a few hours and, um, and had a great time doing it. Um, Mike Tavell uh, used, used uh, the same kind of grubs that he uses for um, for bass, that was a green pumpkin, uh, three to three and a half inch uh, curly tail grub on a 16th ounce head, and then uh, 176. That's a Yamamoto 176 grub that that he, he used to catch both uh, trout and bass. But that's that was the first trout that we caught of the day mm -hmm. came on that, and then uh, and then this is a a, a, a uh, this is a grub that he uses a lot in a lot of different uh, lakes uh, to catch practically everything that swims. Yep, it seems so, to. so um, we had a wonderful day catching a bunch of trout, and um, and it's exciting to know that you can catch trout the same way we catch bass. That's what I want to make sure that you understand is that you do not have to just throw a power bait. You don't have to just throw a worm. You don't have to. Uh, 
to throw marshmallows. You just don't have to do that. You can use bass techniques, and some of these are so great because they don't take the the lure deep. You can get them out. You can release them if you want. You can certainly take them home if you if you if you desire to. And we took a few home today because I have some people I owed some fish to, so I'm excited to do that. But um, but basically, most of the fish we catch, we we release, and um, it's amazing to be able to catch those kind of trout on bass lures. Anyway, Don at DonAlfin.com, thanks for watching. Um, like us, uh, subscribe to our channel. Go to www.DonAlfin.com. Uh, read my posts. I've got over 2,200 articles that I've written and published over the next over the last uh, 25 years. Love to share some insights with you. Love to get a conversation going. Don't hesitate to comment and um, and uh, sign up and let me know you're there. And uh, perhaps we'll be able to to take one of you with us uh, fishing in the next in the near future.